Today I'm going to be doing two recipes. I feel like when it comes to fall, more people get in the kitchen, right? Wouldn't you say like it's colder outside, you want to cook meals at home and so forth. And I love doing demos when it comes to the cooler months because I just feel like, like people are listening, which is always really nice when you do these demos. You know, in summertime, it's like, yeah, I just want to go outside. I want to go to the pool. I want to barbecue and so forth. But um, I love doing demos in the fall because I just have more attention. So we're going to do a really nice butternut squash dish, and then we're going to move over to a really nice stuffing or a dressing dish that you guys call in the States here. We call it stuffing in Ireland. Like anything that has bread with onions and stuff, it's a stuffing. It's, like it's not dressing, it's stuffing. Um, and it goes in a bird, doesn't matter what, or any animal, to be, to, to be frank. Um, but um, also I want to talk to you, today I actually have some cookbooks, brought them in from Los Angeles. So um, I didn't have them in Denver with me, but I have them here today. I brought up about 10 or 12 of them with me. So my first cookbook I brought up was called The Quick Six Fix. This is essentially what I'm about. Uh, six key ingredients, six minutes prep, six minutes cleanup. Um, just like anything, like a key ingre ingredient would be anything that's like fresh, like meat, like a vegetable, something that would, let's say, go bad after two or three or four days, okay? And then you have some pantry essentials like olive oil, salt, and pepper, and so forth, which you should always have in your kitchen at all. If you're, if you're going to be a serious cook at all or want to cook in the kitchen, there's a few essentials you must have, like a few spices here and there, but nothing crazy. I always, you know, I always want people to be successful in the kitchen, and, um, and I try and make it as easy as possible, and that's why I brought that book out, because it's, it's really just a great starter cookbook. If you, but, the, but the recipes are not, the recipes are just, they're kind of innovative, and they're just simple, and they're tasty, and they're hearty, and, and healthy as well, you know, coming from, like the hardiness from Ireland, their freshness from California, and I kind of meshed the two together. And, um, and that's it. And, you know, we're just, we're gonna have some fun today. Ask me questions, please put up your hand, because it keeps it going, it keeps me happy. And we'll, you know, we'll joke around. But what I'll do is I'm gonna give a cookbook away at the end of the, of the demo. So to be in with a chance for it, to get your phone, follow me on Instagram. And at the very end, we're gonna pick a random number. I'm gonna count down and whoever it is, you win a signed cookbook. Easy? Okay, so let's get started. So I'm gonna start off with the stuffing first, or the dressing. It's like a dressing. If it's not in a bird, it's a dressing, right? But you could put this in a bird. And it probably tastes even better as well because you have the juices from the meat that would seep into it. And I guess that's why we have the chicken stock here and so forth. So I have a nice hot pan where I'm gonna get a hot. And I put some olive oil in there. It doesn't seem to be getting hot. These pans, I'm like, it's roasting. It's like, it's not hot at all. Like, but we're gonna get there. So I have some breakfast sausage here out of its casing. So we're just gonna pop that in. I'm gonna brown off some of that. I did have wooden spoons here, hold on. Here we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna break that up. When you guys are doing Thanksgiving or whatever holiday, Christmas, Easter even, who here makes stuffing or dressing? I mean, you have to have it, right? In every kind of meal when it comes to the holidays. So important. I know uh, growing up in Ireland every, God, I mean, my mother would do a roast every Sunday and um, she would make a stuffing. And it always was like bread, like onion. Sometimes there was bacon in there and so forth and thyme. And um, this is taking its time to cook. Wow, we're gonna be here. It says 24 minutes on the clock. I need another hour on there. But okay, I'm just gonna let that do its thing. So growing up in Ireland, we would like cook at Christmas and that's how I kind of started to cook with my mom. She would like ask me like to cut carrots and onions and she would work at the store and then she would come home from, from the store. She had a women's clothing store. 
and uh, she'd always make me kind of do bits and pieces to start the meal off before she would get home at six o'clock in the evening and finish off the cooking. And that's kind of where my love of cooking came about. And then I would do desserts with my aunt um, after school and, um, and she kind of taught me a lot as well about it. But um, this is not getting hot, guys. I don't know why. Because now it says, let me try this one. I mean, it is hot, but it's just, I think it's the pan. But we'll get there. So, I would do desserts with my aunt before she, she passed, passed away and I dedicated the book to her and we used to, I used to, we used to make Guinness cake together, which is like such a great recipe kind of around, around Christmas, around fall. It's basically like a soda bread with like raisins in it and a bottle of Guinness. And then the Guinness would bake off, but I was like eight or nine years of age, and it's always like a, it's such a vivid memory that I have of her and growing up. She would give me like two bucks, and she would walk me out. She had a gross, like a sweet shop, like a candy store, and um, there was a bar across the street. So she'd walk me to the sidewalk, holding my hand, and she would like let me go across the street, and she'd be like, go into the pub and ask him for a bottle of Guinness, like seven. And, you know, they knew me that I would come in every, like, once a week with two pounds. And it was like this, like, with, like, the money, you know, over the counter, like, asking the bartender for a bottle. And then he would, like, pop, the, he would pop the, the cap, give me the bottle. And it was just this, like, seven-year-old in my small town in Ireland, like, walking across the street. Like, my aunt would wait for me because I'd be about five minutes. So she would just wait. It never occurred to me why she just wouldn't come with me and just go in. I think it was because the store was still open, so she had to look after the front desk. And then she would kind of watch me out the window, so when I came out of the pub, she would come back out, and then I'd walk across. Um, and that was it. And it was like, I loved baking with her. She would just bake a lot um, of desserts, and um, it was really so much fun. And, um, and then what we would do is I would get some dessert books, and I would look at them during the week, and then pick out one or two desserts, and then on a Saturday, we would bake them together and I'd bring it down to my mom and dad and we'd all eat it for dinner and stuff like that. All right, we're getting a small bit of a sizzle. It's like exciting times here in Cincinnati. Um, but what, um, what else? Okay, so I'm in Cincinnati. I'm here till Sunday, so I'm gonna be eating a bit. What should, what do I need to try out? Somebody said something about chili. No, it's like the best chili you'll ever have is in Cincinnati. No, there's a lot of no's. Okay, I am gonna do it because I am here. It's my first time in Cincinnati, so like, where do I go? Where? Grainers? High Street? Ice cream, Grainers, G-R-A-I-N-E-R-S? Craners. Craters. Raiders ice cream. Skyline chili. A barbecue, Montgomery. I love barbecue. That is, if people say, to, everybody asks chefs, like, what's your favorite food? It's a thing I get all the time. Barbecue. I love American barbecue. It's like the best. Okay. So I'm gonna add in a half a cup of onion. And we're gonna get that going. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lid on just to kind of keep the heat in. I think it's just taking a bit because the pan is so big and like the ring is small. And I love to cook on gas, so electric is quite slow. Um, but what I got here is we have some sourdough bread. Now this is, this is an important part of the of a stuffing, I think. Now, generally you would get sourdough bread. Take the crust off all the time. Don't keep the crust on there because you just get a nice, finer stuffing that's more even all the way around in every single bite. Um, so that's why I would do that. And then I would toast it. Because we were, we're gonna be mixing chicken stock and some butter with it afterwards and we wanted to absorb all those wonderful juices. And, um, but still have a nice texture to it. And that's why I, I toast the bread. And um, just like take off the 
So actually, I got some here. I'll just like do it. So I just like take it off. And also, tip: if you have any day-old bread, it's just the best for using for for stuffing. It really is. My mom like would always overbuy, and there would just there'd be bags of breadcrumbs in my house, like literally bags. And it was like, we'd nearly have stuffing like two or three times a week. I was like, you need to stop. Like, we're just not doing that. Um, and then all I do is just tear it up on a tray, mix it with some olive oil, and, um, and you can do that. If you have any leftover bread, you can just get a few bags, or like a Ziploc bag, and, um, and put it together, and then maybe just plan to make kind of stuffing at the weekend or so forth or dressing. Um, another favorite of my dressings is I love a cornbread dressing. And um, I, what I'll do is like I'll put like cherries and like dates through it with some chicken stock and thyme. It's really nice with a pork chop. Super, super nice. I was on the fence. I was like, should I do a cornbread stuffing or should I do this one? I like this one because it's just, it's kind of an all year round stuffing. You can make it at any time, which is nice. Okay, we're getting a good sizzle now. Okay, so we got our, we got our uh, onion in there, we got our uh, breakfast sausage. If you like an Italian sausage, if you want something spicier, you can add that in too, you can choose that. I'm gonna add in some chili flakes, because I like to control my spice. Some thyme leaves. What I didn't add was some salt and pepper. Anybody have any questions? I don't like an audience that's quiet. Yes. Now it's like I ask for questions and then I can't hear. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Yes. So what you could do with the crust is you could, you could put it in a food processor and you could put it in a Ziploc bag and you could freeze it. And then if you ever did like a mac and cheese, you could toast the breadcrumbs and use it as a topping. That's gonna just on the fly right now. I just thought of that. See, you're making me think. It's like the worst when you can't answer a question, you know, cause I don't know everything, but uh, you know, I try. Um, okay, that's looking really good. Now we got some kale. So this is a California date stuffing. That's what I call it. Why do I call it a California? Because we're adding kale. And I live in Los Angeles. And do you remember when kale became the big thing? It was like everywhere. And then people just got like so tired of it. And then, um, but in a stuffing recipe, it's really nice. It just adds some really nice color. It's healthy. It's good for you. I always find it's different. And especially like with kale, like in salads, people find it very hard to digest. And, um, and I get it, like what I like to do with kale, if you're having a kale salad, get some like olive oil and lemon juice together and massage it maybe 30 minutes before you're gonna eat it. And it'll break it down. And it just makes it a, the salad a lot more bearable. And then what I would do is I'd mix some romaine lettuce with it. So it's not just like, you don't feel like you're a rabbit company just like chewing all the time, you know? Listen, we all go through these issues. I always try and figure out ways like, how can I make this like, you know, bearable to eat? How can I be healthier? There's always different ways. Okay, this is looking great. All in one pan. Now, I'm gonna add the bread in here, all right? I'm gonna get those flavors going. That cornbread stuffing I was talking about is in the cookbook. Um, I broke down the cookbook in like simple, simple categories because I feel like whenever you're, um, you're gonna cook dinner or anything like that, I always figure out like, what's the first thing you think of? For me, it's like, what protein do I want? And then I kind of work from there. Like, do you want chicken, beef, pasta, or what, like, shrimp, fish, like whatever it is. So I kind of break it down like breakfast, salad, soups, pasta, fish, chicken, pork, beef, whatever. 
and then sides, because I feel like side dishes are so big. So like I've loads of, I've like two or three Brussels sprout recipes. I have the cornbread recipe in there too. Um, anybody wants it for a gift, it's $20 cash, or I can take your credit card, whatever, at the very end. And, um, and yeah, I'm just glad I got to be able to bring it today. Okay, so we got everything mixed around there. I have some chicken stock here. And I'm just gonna add, and I have some butter mixed with the two. And just the bread is gonna absorb that. I'm gonna stir that around. You want it wet, but you don't want it super, super soggy because what's gonna happen is, after we're done with this, it's going straight into like a Pyrex dish and we're gonna bake it at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. Now, you can make everything up until this point, cover it, put it in the fridge, and bake it off the next day. If you're gonna do that, I would say take it out of the fridge a good hour to two hours before you pop it into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes, 15 minutes at 400 degrees, okay? So just be easy with the liquid. Like I would add some, give it a stir, add a bit more if you want. Okay, let's take off the heat. Now I'm gonna add in some California dates, some medjool dates, okay? These are the larger ones. Because we have that sausage in there, right? It's quite salty. So this is just gonna be a really nice balance for it. So medjool dates are like the larger dates. You can get the small ones too, you can use those as well. I recently became an ambassador for California dates. Um, I was at a date farm last weekend. It was insane, but it was super, super fun. Like I got to go up on a, on a lift and shake the palms and then the dates fall, because right now it's harvest. And, um, and I'm telling you, like, like this date is pretty good. And the reason why I'm the ambassador is like, People are scared of dates, they don't know what to do with them. They feel like they can only put them in like milkshakes or like a smoothie. They make really good milkshakes. They do these date shakes in the Coachella Valley. They're insane. And um, so what I'm trying to do is kind of make, not like make dates cool, like just kind of in a way, but kind of like just younger and hipper and like, hey, you can use them in all types of cooking. I mean, especially with the fall now, like adding it into this stuffing, it's super delicious. Or else I always think, if there's any dish that has dried fruit in it, you can substitute in dates. And dates, I like find, they have characteristics, characteristics of like toffee, of caramel. Um, so think about that too. And you can substitute it in for, for sugar in baking recipes. Um, if you chop that up, you can, and if you, you heat it up with some water, melt it down, and you can do cup for cup, or half a cup for half a cup of sugar. And it's just a better sugar for you. It's a low glycemic index. And um, whatever, I'll stop talking about that, because it's like, okay, sure, we get it. Like, we got it. Um, okay, so we got the stuffing. Looks really good. Can you guys see this? Okay, so we got everything mixed in there. Now, if you wanted to, you could let this cool and you could stuff your bird with it. You could. And, um, and I got some toasted almonds, so just some almonds. Look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. You guys see this? Where do you see it? Can you see it? Okay. That's the first recipe. So you got your stuffing. You got your potluck dish and of course if you don't you can make it vegetarian if you wanted to um, you could use any one of those vegan meats in there as well if you wanted to do that all right let's move on to the second dish any questions so everybody knows everything basically they're like yes we do okay what are my favorite seasonings Fall seasonings. It's not pumpkin. 
Uh, no, I don't mind pumpkin. Uh, like cinnamon, like I do like allspice, cinnamon, like cardamom. Um, like I do like that. I think the more, I've lived in America now like 12 years. I became a citizen like two years ago and it's really growing on me. Like as soon as like it hits fall, like you get all those flavors, all those smells. Like I walk into like any grocery store and it's like, boom, you see the, those cones are at the door, right? And you smell them and then I'm like, you know, what? I'm gonna get involved this year. I'm gonna actually buy them and put them around the house. And it's actually, it's nice now when I walk in. But yeah, like that kind of warm spices like that, that kind of give like me a sense of like coziness. Like with the old spice, with like um, like nutmeg. Like when I was young, I never liked those spices. It was just a really like palate. Like I really had to build my palate with it. And um, yeah, it took a while. Especially cinnamon. Cinnamon was a hard one for me, but I love it now. I love like cinnamon sugar and like tossing it in things. It's great. Okay, so we got butternut squash. I already peeled the butternut squash because you don't need to see me peeling a butternut squash. If I would always say with this, let's get a peeler. Later. Okay. Um, where is the peeler? Let me see. They took it away. Okay, here's a trick. So, oh, like, check your peelers at home. Make sure you have a nice sharp one. If you have this smooth surface one, or like a jagged one is always better when it comes to any waxy um, fruit. Not fruit, um, vegetable or fruit. It is a fruit because it's like uh, seeds. Um, so yeah, like one with that's slightly jagged. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Yeah. So that's a really good. I actually used a smooth one peeling this just before you guys came. And um, I think it was just was super sharp. So it was like, it was pretty easy. But it, it is hard. Like I, I agree with you. Um, Put it on a towel like this, so it doesn't move around. Because you can really hurt yourself with this. You really, really can. Um, I recommend super sharp knife. Also, guys, it's the perfect time right now. You know, I know I keep saying fall, like more people are in the kitchen, but we are. Like, we're not outside as much anymore with the weather. So we're inside, we're more inclined to cook more. Now's the time to sharpen your knives. Like, send them away somewhere. There's a, there's a website called, like, uh, Knife Aid, Chef Aid, Knife Aid, I think it's called. And they send you an envelope, you put your knives in, and you send it off and they send it back to you in like two or three days. And they're all sharpened and it's like 20 bucks. It's really reasonable, but I totally recommend at least once a year get your knives sharpened because end of the day, if you have a sharp knife, you're not gonna use so much force and pressure on your arm. And that's when accidents happen, you know? So like a sharp knife is so good. Um, so I just like take the, the top, take the tail off it. I mean, this is what it is, so I just kind of go into the middle. I just slowly do it. Nobody's in a rush, and just take your time. Because seriously, I mean, this could be, I've never seen anyone do this, like, um, have an accident with this before, in culinary school even. And you know, we've pretty much seen everything there. So we take out the seeds. So has anybody heard of Hasselback potatoes? So the little slices? So that's what we're gonna do with this. And it's just a really, I think presentation wise, it looks, it looks beautiful on a plate. Okay, they're gone. Next thing what we'll do is pop these on a tray. Some olive oil, I'm just gonna get my hands in there, okay? All the way around. Our oven is at 400 degrees. There is no oven, so I'm just talking you through it, okay? Next year. Um, so, butternut squash, oven under here is 400 degrees. We're gonna pop this in at 400 degrees, okay? And then what's gonna happen is, we're gonna get this, right? 
We're gonna do, I'm gonna do it step by step because I don't wanna be like, I don't know what he meant. Like, I didn't, I didn't see him do it. So, I'm gonna put these on the trays, okay? So they just came out of the oven. Ooh, hot, right? So, back, like, I know. But people will be like, I didn't, I missed that step. You didn't, because I showed you now. Okay? So there we go. So that goes into the oven for about 15, 20 minutes, okay? And it's not fully cooked, but it's definitely softened, okay? We're not finished cooking it yet. Can everybody see? Okay, so what we're gonna do then, so I call it a Hasselback. Like, I, I make Hasselback potatoes. You can do this with like large rusted potatoes too. You don't have to par cook them with, when it's potatoes because it's softer, you can easily cut through it. So what we're gonna do is cut like three quarters of the way down. And we're just gonna do slits like this. Now a trick to make it easier. You can get a wooden spoon like that. You can get another one. Okay, now you can mess it up. So you just go, that makes sense? Do we, or you can get like, you can get um, chopsticks. Chopsticks works too. I messed it up. It's overcooked. No. But okay, you get the gist though, okay? So, two minutes left, that's not gonna happen. Okay, so, so we'll do this here. And it's okay, look, if it falls apart, that's okay. Just put it back together like that, we're all good. I'm gonna do this one just because. Okay. Now, we got some bay leaves, because we want to make it pretty. And we're just going to insert them in, I would say like five or six per thing, per, um, per side, per thing. Who says that? It's like we're working with a, <laughs> we're working with food. Do you know that thing? But I just think this dish looks so beautiful when it comes out of the oven. And it's, the bay leaves give it just a really nice flavor. And it's like super like fall and Christmassy and it's just like delicious. Okay, so then, tiny bit more olive oil, right? Oh, here we go. Hit it with some salt and pepper. Now, this will go back into the oven for probably another 45 minutes, okay? 400 degrees. Just keep an eye on it. If it looks kind of dry, just maybe just some melted butter, you can brush it over with two, you're like you're basing it. And, um, and then it's gonna come out like this. Just cooked, it's cooked. So then we have that, so that's gonna cool, right, for a minute. It looks, I think mine was prettier going in, right? I was like, yeah, I think, look, all butternut squashes are different. Like, this is a fabulous one right here. And look how, look how long that one is. So I feel like if you can get a nice big one and you have a lovely, like, round platter, you can just lay, lay two of them. You know, it just look really nice. And you can decorate it with some, um, some more bay leaves and so forth. All right, so we got our food processor here. I'm going to put down this book. And we're going to make a parsley pesto. So I'm going to add clove of garlic some parsley. I know what people are thinking, like, is that gonna be bitter because it's, it's parsley and, and so forth? And yeah, you are right. But we're gonna sweeten it up with some honey. 
olive oil, some honey. What I also like to do with this, if you want to just make it even simpler, you could get maple syrup, right? Put it in a saucepan and get some um, Fresno chilies or Thai chilies and slice it and just bring it a really low heat for about 20 minutes to infuse like the, the spiciness of the, um, of the pepper. Because a bit of heat that goes on this with the sweetness of the, the maple is really nice too. Um, some Parmesan and some pistachios. And pop that on. It's gonna a tiny bit. I just wanna loosen it up a bit. You can use this pesto on toast if you wanted to. You don't have to put it on just this. this is, pesto is pesto, it's so tasty. Um, that. Have salt. Tiny bit of salt. Okay, we're good. It's looking really good. Okay. So I'm gonna use this. I love a chopping board as a display item, so we'll pop this on here. So I think just kind of like that. And then we just get our spoon and just kind of just drip it over. Like this. The messier, the better. Rustic, rustic, you mess it up, it's called rustic. Always remember that. And then, see, like it just looks like fantastic, right? Because it just looks a bit messy, but yeah. Always, if you ever go into stores and you see discounted boards, just grab them like the 10 or 15 bucks, whatever they are, because you'll always use them for like vegetables, for cheese platters or whatever it is. Okay, so to recap, so we got our stuffing, our dressing, with dates, yummy stuff, sourdough bread and so forth. There's a bit of a process to make it, but you can make it the day before. With this, you could do this the day before too, keep it wrapped in cling wrap overnight, and then when you take it out to assemble it, warm it up in the oven, pop back in the bay leaves, put your pesto over it. You can buy store-bought pesto, but this, the parsley just was really nice with the sweetness of the butternut squash. There's bitterness there and then the honey, it's really nice. And, um, and yeah, and that's it. Like, you know, kind of healthy sides. Thanksgiving's around the corner. Please try these. And, um, and that's it. I'm Chef Stewart. I hope you enjoyed this.